Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play a song by Duran Duran called Rio. And it starts out with a really cool bass lick. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the chords that kind of back it up are going to start on an E minor chord. And the way you play E minor, first finger is going to go to the A string on the second fret. Second finger is going to go to the D string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like E minor chord, and it sounds really, really sad. And then from the E minor, we're going to be going to a C major chord. And the way you play C major, first finger is going to go to the B string on the first fret. Second finger is going to go to the D string on the second fret. And third finger is going to go to the A string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a C major chord and it sounds really, really happy. And then from the C major chord, we're going to be going to an A minor chord. And the way you play A minor, first finger is going to actually stay on the B string first fret. Second finger is going to stay on the D string second. And third finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A minor chord and it sounds really, really sad. And then from the A minor, we're going to be going back to the C major. And that's basically our verse, like, like through the tune, although there, there's a really cool Duran Duran change like near the end. But you got E minor, C major, A minor, C major. But a lot of times with a song like this, to make it a little bit more interesting, I like adding something called a strum pattern. And one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 is down, down, up, up, down, up. So we took the E minor and just tried that a lot. You got down, down, up. So we tried that through our intro and our verse progression. We have E minor down, up, down, C down, down, up, up, down, A minor down, down, up, up, down, C down, down, up, up, down, E minor down, down, up, up, down, C down. major for kind of a keyboard break and the way you play E major instead of E minor first finger is going to go to the G string on the first fret second finger is going to go to the A string on the second fret and third finger is going to go to the D string on the second fret and if you strum all those together it sounds a big E major chord and it sounds really really happy so one other thing you may want to try and add through that intro part is kind of that intro bass line. And on the intro bass line, it actually kind of starts around a C chord in, in, in the keyboard part. And you may want to just kind of block that C chord, or you can even just play just that one note on the A string, like the third fret on the A is a C note. So this is kind of a big C. And then the bass line is very, very cool. You've got open E, and then we're going seventh fret on the A, and then fifth fret on the A, and then fifth fret on the D string, and then 6th fret on the D string, and then 7th fret on the, on the D string. So you're going to O, 7, 5, 5, 6, 7, or E, E, D, G, G sharp, A, which kind of gets repeated a lot. But then there's some really cool key, uh, guitar chords that kind of come in around that, and these are little pieces of, or little, little chords of the chords that we just talked about. And so the first one you, you kind of hit is going to go 7th fret on the high E, 8th fret on the B, and 9th fret on the G string. And if you strum just the top three strings, that's a little E minor chord. And in the recording, it almost sounds like you hit that chord and then kind of let it slide into nothing. So I'm kind of playing that little E minor. And then from there, then there's like a little C chord you could play where you go 8th fret on the high E and the B string at the same time, and then 9th fret on the G string. And if you strum those three... That makes a little C major chord, and it almost sounds like you're doing that same kind of thing where you kind of play that chord and then do a slide and another. And then from there, then we're going to a little A minor chord, and you could do this with 8th fret on the high E, 10th fret on the B string, and 9th fret on the G string. And if you strum those three together, that's a little A minor chord. And then from the A minor, then you'll be going back to the C chord we talked about where it's 8A9. So you've got kind of little E minor chord. Little C chord, little A minor chord, little C chord. And then we almost kind of start that over again with the E minor and then the C major. 
But then instead of the A minor we just talked about, then you go fifth fret on the high E, B, and G string all at the same time. And if you strum those together, that makes a little A minor chord it's just kind of in a different place, but you're still playing the same three notes, A's, C's, and E's. And so you kind of play that and do the slide down, and then you go back to the C major. So, so it, that, that can be a cool thing to kind of add in, kind of doing those little guitar chords too. And then when we get to our chorus part, we actually start on the E major chord we talked about for the keyboard. Version. And then we're going to a B major chord. And there's actually a couple different ways we could do this actually. One way would be to do it as a bar chord is second fret. And so if you know that, that one is kind of a bar second fret. And then second finger goes to the D on the fourth fret, third finger on the G string on the fourth fret, and pinky on the B string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a B major chord, it sounds really, really happy. Another way you may want to try and finger that is kind of keeping the first finger down and then taking third finger and kind of barring the, the D, G, and B, almost like a double bar. Kind of using two fingers to kind of get those same notes. Another possibility would play with a lot of bar chords, you can take the, the skinny strings and kind of make a smaller version of that chord. So you could play high E on the second, pinky on the B string on the fourth, and third finger on the G string on the fourth fret. And if you strum those together, that's another way to play B major. If you're a little bit more adventurous, you could go high E on, on the second fret, second finger on the D string on the fourth fret, third finger on the G on the fourth fret, and pinky on the B string on the fourth fret, and kind of make it a little bit bigger B major. Another possibility, and what I think actually is kind of the easiest option out actually, is to substitute in a B7 chord instead of a B major. And the way you play B7, first finger is going to go to the D on the first fret, second finger goes to the A on the second fret, third finger on the G string on the second fret, and the pinky goes to the high E on the second fret. And if you strum just the A string to the high E string, that sounds a B7 chord. It sounds a little bit messed up, but I think it can substitute in really well for, for that B major. And then from the B major, we're going to be going to a D major chord. And the way you play D major, first finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret, second finger is going to go to the high E on the second fret, and third finger is going to go to the B string on the third fret. And if you strum just the D, G, B, and E, kind of the skinny four strings, that sounds a D major chord. It sounds really, really happy. And then from the D major, we're going to be going to an A major chord. And the way you play A major, first finger goes to the D on the second fret, second finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret, and third finger on the B string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, it makes a big party on the second fret, and that's called A major. And so our, our chorus really is just repeating those four chords. So we got E major, B7, D major, A major. So we tried that with our strum pattern, and we have E down, up, up, down, B7, down, down, up, up, down, D. One other thing you may want to try and add to the song though is, is working off of bass notes. So a lot of times instead of doing the down, down, up, up, down, up, you could actually do a bass down, up, up, down, up. And what I mean by that is like on the E minor, you could play the low E string for your bass and then do your down, up, up, down, up on your E minor chords. So low E bass, down, up, up, down, up. Tried that, 
through our intro part, you'd have E minor with the Louis bass, down, up, up, down, C with an A bass, down, up, up, down, E minor with an A bass, down, up, up, down, C with an A bass, down, up, up, down, E minor with the Louis bass, down, up, up, down, C with an A bass, down, up, up, down, E minor with an A bass, down, up, up, down, C with an A bass, down, up, up, down, E minor with the Louis bass, down, up, up, down, C with an A bass, down, up, up, down, E minor with an A bass, down, up, up, down, C with an A bass, down, up. And then from there, if we try the bass down, up, up, down, through the chorus, we'd have the E with the low E bass, down, up, up, down, B with an A bass, down, up, up, down, D with a D bass, down, up, up, down, B with an A bass, down, up, up, down, B with a low E bass, down, up, up, down, B with an A bass, down, up, up, down, D with a D bass, down, up, up, down, B with an A bass, down, up, up, down, B with a low E bass, down, up, up, down, B with an A bass, down, up, up, down, D with a D bass, down, up. Side, there's a really really cool guitar solo that kind of comes in around that chorus part each time and that part starts out on fifth fret on the B string and then you play seventh fret on the high E and kind of do a slide to ninth fret and then go back to seventh fret on the high E and then we go tenth fret on the high E and then twelfth fret on the high E and then ninth fret on the high E and then we so then we almost kind of repeat that idea with a slightly different ending where we play fifth fret on the B string and then do the 7 9 slide on the high E again. But then we go to 10th fret on the high E and do a bend to 12th fret. So I'm kind of pressing up and into the guitar at the same time. And then you come out of the bend to 9th fret on the high E. So you got 5, 7, 9, 10, 9. <laughs> and then from there, then we kind of go back to that same idea with a little different ending where we go 5th fret on the high E. And then we still do the 7 9 slide. And then back to 7. And then we go 10 on the high E. And then we go to 9th fret on the high E. And then 7th on the high E. But then we go to 8th on the high E. And then 7th fret on the high E. And then kind of slide back to 5th. So we got 5, 7, 9, 7, 10, 9, 7, 8, 7, slide to 5. And then we kind of repeat that last lick one more time at the end of the solo where we got 5, 7, 9, 7, 10, 9, 7, 8, 7, 5. So that might be kind of a cool thing to add in too. And then from there we'd be going into our bridge part. And our bridge actually uses some, some other bar chords that we hadn't really talked about. And an option if you want to make this really, really simple is just leave out the bridge. <laughs> but, um, but what you would do to play the bridge is it starts out on a C sharp minor chord. And the way you play C sharp minor, first finger is going to go across the entire fourth fret as a bar. Second finger on the high E on the fifth, third on the D string on the sixth, and the pinky on the G string on the sixth. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a C sharp minor chord. It sounds really, really sad. And just like we were talking about with the B major earlier, you can actually take smaller pieces of this to make a smaller C sharp minor chord. So you could play first finger on the high E fourth, second on the B string fifth, and third finger on the G string sixth, and kind of play just those three strings to kind of get a smaller C sharp minor. Or if you're slightly more adventurous, you could play high E on the first fret, um, and then second finger on the B string, fifth fret, third finger on the D string on the sixth fret, and the pinky on the G string on the sixth fret to kind of make a slightly smaller C sharp minor. And then from the C sharp minor, we're going to be going to an A major chord. So we kind of kind of have the A major that we talked about in the chorus. And then from there, we're going to an F sharp major chord. And the way you play F sharp major, first finger is going to go across the entire second fret. Second finger is going to go to the G on the third fret. Third finger on the A on the fourth fret. And the pinky on the D string on the fourth fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like an F sharp major chord. It sounds really, really happy. And you can make smaller versions of the F sharp major too by taking down to just the top, top pieces and kind of making a smaller F sharp major too. And then basically, we're, then we're going back to the A major. And then we go back to C sharp minor. And then back to A major. F sharp major, and then we go to A major. And then that slightly changes after that for the sax solo, but just to try that the, with our strum pattern, we have C sharp minor down, down, up, up, down, up, A, down, down, up, up, down, 
Let's throw me down, down, up, up, down, 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 down,
but then we go back up to 11 on the E, 12 on the E, 11 on the E, 9 on the high E, and then 12 on the B, and then 9 on the high E, and then G string 11, and then a little pull off from 11 to 9, and then we go to D on the 11, and then 11 on the G, and then 9, and then 11, and then 9, and then 11, and then 9, and then back to a D on the 11 twice. And then we go to the B string on the 12, and then we do it twice, and then we go to 14 on the high, or on the B string twice, and then back to B string 12 twice, and then we go to 14 on the B string one time, and then we go to 14 on the D, and then we go back to that 12 on the B string, and then 14 on the B twice, and then back to 12 twice, and then 14, and then 12 twice, and then 14, and then high E 12, and then back to B string 12, and then 14, and then 12, 14, and then 14 on the D, and then 11 on the D, but then 13 on the G, and then 11 on the G, and another 11, and another 11, then we do a slide to 9 and go to the D on 11. And then we play 11 on the on the D twice. And then 9 on the G one time. D tw 11 twice. And then 9 on the B. And then 9 on the G string twice. And then 12 on the B. And then 10 on the B twice. And then we go high E 9. And then 10 on the B string twice. And then high E 12. So that's really crazy, but... That would be a really cool thing to try and double that sax solo, especially if you're playing lead through the part. And then from there, then we'll be going back into our last verse. And on our last verse, it almost feels like instead of the A minor chord, you're actually playing an A major chord. So just to try that, you'd have the E minor down, down, up, up, down, C, down, down, up. with low bass down up up down C with an A bass down up up down bass with an A bass down up up down C with an A bass down up up down E minor with low bass down up up down C with an A bass down up up down bass with an A bass down up up down C with an A bass down up up down E minor with low bass down up up down C with an A bass down up up down bass with an A bass down up up down C with an A bass down up up down up and at the very end of that then we got our big break on the E major Outro is really just kind of our chorus progression, kind of our last chorus, um, just doing that a lot. So on our last chorus, we got that E down, up, up, down, B down, down, up, up, down, B down. basics of how you can play Rio by Duran Duran. So good luck!